Hi, Ashley here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a monotub. But first, let's learn the basic concepts of how a monotub works. We know when the mycelium colonizes the bulk substrate, this action combined with the decomposition of the bulk substrate generates heat and carbon dioxide. We also know that heat rises and carbon dioxide usually falls to the ground. So for our monotub, what we need to do is we need to drill holes on this side and the other side a little higher up here and holes on these sides a little bit lower. This will create basically a this atmosphere flow in the monotub where when the heat rises it's going to flow out of these top portion holes and this allows for new airflow into the these bottom holes so it creates this whole circulation of the monotub. Obviously I did not do this on this monotub I just drilled holes wherever I wanted um, and guess what my mushrooms still fruited so even if you are not really precise in where you drill your holes it doesn't really matter. So Next, I'll actually uh, show you ex precisely what I've done or how I've done the monotub and the stages that follow. So when making your monotub, you only need to do two simple things. Drill six two-inch holes and paint the bottom. Remember when you're drilling the holes that you want to drill the holes higher on this side and lower on this side. Also, when drilling the holes, you want to make sure that you're very careful in drilling and not to drill too quickly. If you drill too quickly, it'll make the container crack. Last, you will paint the bottom. The reason why we paint the bottom is we don't want the mushrooms growing down. We want the mushrooms growing up. And in order to get the mushrooms to grow up, we simply paint the bottom and they grow up towards the light. So stay tuned next to see me add my grain spawn bags to the bulk substrate. Hi! Ashley here, and today I'm going to show you how to put your fully colonized spawn bag into your bulk substrate. The first thing I recommend doing is sterilizing the whole place. After this stage of the mycelium, they say that you don't necessarily have to be as sterile, but I think it's very important to be as sterile as possible to try to reduce contamination as much as you can. So I have some alcohol, and I'm just going to spray everything down. Really quickly, so we're good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my monotub. So I've already um, sprayed the bottom of it and drilled the holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the holes for the, colon for the colonization process. Because we do not want to ever open this, we want this to be completely contained in its own environment so that we can create as much humidity as possible. You need to have about 75 to 90 percent humidity within these monotubs for the colonization process. So in order to do that, I just literally take some packing tape and cover up the holes. So I have drilled uh, six holes. So I'm going to quickly cover them all up. Okay, we are all sealed up and ready to go. So next, we will break up our fully colonized spawn bag. And we're going to break it up in this spot. And I'm just going to go ahead and start. Your mycelium should be a pretty hard substance. Um, and it looks like the mycelium is mostly on top of this bag, but it did penetrate through the bottom or through the middle. We have broken up our colonized spawn bag, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our bulk substrate into our model tub. My, I have pre-made my bulk substrate yesterday. We have let it sit for 24 hours so it cools down. If your bulk, sub, if your bulk substrate is too hot, it will kind of actually kill the mycelium. So be careful not to put um, too hot a bulk substrate with your mycelium. My bulk substrate is made of vermiculite. Cocoa choir and Jimson. And I'm just going to do one quick sterile before I open up the bag. Here we go. So I'm going to open up my 
Coming back. Okay, my hands in. I'm trying not to contaminate it or touch it. Because this is the process, but I don't want to get anything extra in there. So I'm going to start off with just putting a small layer of my colonized spawn bag into the mono tub. And we want to try to break up any little pieces um, because we want the mycelium to be able to um, get as many points of inoculations as we can within the bulk substrate. So then I will add a layer of bulk substrate. And it's really important that you have the correct field capacity. You, it's very important that you have the correct field capacity for your bulk substrate. And I checked mine before I started. But when you hold your bulk substrate, you should be able to hold it without it being a dripping of water and very dry. But when we hold it and grip it and squeeze a little bit, you should get a drip, which we do. And if you really squeeze it, you should get a stream of water, which we do. This is perfect. Then, without mixing it up, I'm just going to layer it on top. And then I'm going to add another layer of our spawn bag on top of the bulk substrate. And I'm going to layer it too. And I'm kind of picking and choosing um, this mycelium that I'm using on this one because it's a little bit moist at the bottom. Once I do that, and I'm going to take another layer of bulk substrate and layer that on top without really mixing it up. Just kind of layering it without mixing. And I'm going to continue to do this process until both my foam bag and my bulk substrate are in the bag, are in the monotone. And then we're going to add our final layer of bulk substrate. And with this top layer, I like to mix it a little bit with my fingers so that the mycelium kind of mixes on top. And then I am going to put my lid on. Seal it tight. Next, you will place your monotub into a dark, warm place. It needs to be at least 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and your humidity level should be about 75 to 90 percent. I know it's going to be tempting to try to remove the lid, but don't do it. It's super important that this environment stays the same, or your mycelium will not grow properly. So. That's how you do it. That's how you put your colonized spawn bag into your bulk substrate. All right. Started this on July 13th. Today is July 15th. And the mycelium is growing like crazy. It's really important that we keep the lid on um, to keep all the moisture in because that's definitely helping the process. Looking amazing. Hey, Boomer here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to case my mushrooms. It has been 11 days and I have moved my spawn bags into my monotub with my bulk substrate and they are fully colonized and ready to go. So today I wanted to show you how to um, add the polyfill to the holes as well as case um, the mushrooms with cocoa choir and make sure they have enough moisture to fruit. So this is really exciting. So as you can see here, the mushrooms have had a really nice um, humidity or moisture level within their environment. I have not removed this lid in 11 days. This is the first time I removed it. And when you remove it, you feel like this burst of like warmth um, and moisture comes out. That's really good. We know that the mushrooms have, um, have full of life and they um, have a good growth life. The first thing that we need to do is remove the duct tape or remove the tape from our holes and add the polyfill. This is going to allow air to get into the tub and for it to flow. In order to fruit, you definitely need airflow and light for your mushrooms. So let's get started. So I had to, in order to keep a 
moist environment, I just added some clear tape, some packing tape to these two inch holes um, to keep in the moisture. So go ahead and take them out. At this point, I also just want to mention that this environment, once it gets to this stage, um, the mycelium is pretty much at a, a place where it's not, like you don't have to be really sterile. All the other stages, you have to be extremely careful. Okay, so I have removed all the tape. And now we're gonna take our polyfill and we're gonna add a good chunk to each hole. We want enough that not too much air is going through, but enough to, we have enough moisture. I'm going to add less polyfill on the sides than I am in the middle. So that we make sure that there's room for the air to, to get out and then not as much air to go in. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to make sure it's pretty packed in there. Good. I'm going to take some duct tape and just tape around the edges a little bit. You may not have to duct tape, but I like it. So going to add it to the four in the middle. Okay, we have prepared our monotone. And now it's time to case our substrate. All right, and here we go. So what you want to do is you want to get cocoa choir. And I have my cocoa choir in this brick here, but honestly, if you can get a fine cocoa choir that's in a powder form, um, it's going to be a lot better to case your mushrooms. Um, so I have broke up this cocoa choir um, with like a hammer and stuff to try to get it as fine as I can get it. And this is what I've got, uh, come to. I did two bricks, um, so this is 500 grams of cocoa choir. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to case um, the mushrooms. I'm going to pour the cocoa choir into um, the monotub and gently spread it around and then we are going to most moisten the cocoa choir to make sure that it's uh, not, it has a lot of moisture for the mushrooms um, and then we will barely close off our lid and it'll be and then your uh, monotub will start fruiting. So here we go. I'm going to take some handfuls and just start to case my mycelium. And then I'm going to cover the mycelium so there's no white. hydrate the cocoa choir. Instead of just like pouring water all over it, I definitely like to spray it. It gives the cocoa choir a nice even um, spray so that we're not just dumping water into one area. So you are going to spray the cocoa choir until you feel like it's moist enough and then we will put the lid back on um, and then also we want to put it into sunlight um, and you're going to start to see your mushrooms fruit. Every day you want to spurt, uh, 
squirt the mushrooms with some water just to make sure that they have a nice um, even hydration and a nice high um, humidity level. All right. This step takes a while, but definitely better to spray them down. I think I have a good, nice, even um, layer for them. So next, we are going to go ahead and clearly close our lid. It's probably better to have a clear lid. I'm going to switch to one so that the sunlight can get through and the mushrooms will go to the top. That is why we painted the bottom red, or red, we painted the bottom black, is because we don't want the mushrooms growing down, we want the mushrooms growing up. So as long as that they have sunlight or something to go towards, that's the way that they go. Um, but if you put them in a dark area, they will probably grow, but they might grow down and all over, and you never know where, they, where you're going to get mushrooms. So, there we go. Thank you for watching, and subscribe. So, wink. Thank you for watching, and subscribe. Alright, okay. I don't know how well. You're going to, like, edit? Yeah.